This is Rick Rule for the Vancouver Natural Resources Investment Symposium. This year, the virtual edition, 2021. I'm delighted today to uh, welcome two friends. One, Peter Dazzler, who's been a supporter of the conference for many years, and uh, a recent addition, uh, Mr. Corey Bielek, uh, who is now running uh, the issuer, Can Alaska. Gentlemen, it's a delight to have you both on. It's a delight to have you talk about the uranium business. Uh, as most of the viewers know, uh, uranium has been a favorite topic of mine for many reasons, but particularly share price performance uh, over 20 years. I'm delighted to welcome you here, and I'm delighted to thank you for your past sponsorship of the conferences. Uh, my understanding, Peter, is that you're going to defer to younger talent these days to answer most of the questions, so I'll direct them at Corey. But feel free to interrupt me anytime that you think that I've been impertinent or stupid with a question. Corey, my audience knows a lot about the Iranian business. Uh, we don't need to discuss it in terms of baseload power. We don't even need to discuss it in terms of carbon-free energy. But what I do want you to discuss, particularly because you live in Saskatchewan, is the Athabasca Basin, which we have in the past described as the Persian Gulf of Uranium. Tell us something about the economic history and uh, an overview of the geology of the Athabasca Basin and why you are there. Well, thank you, Rick. It's a great pleasure to be here today to talk to you about that very topic. The Athabasca Basin, it is the place to be. It uh, geologically is, in fact, the place where you find uranium deposits that are, quite frankly, 10 to 100 times the grade and size of many deposits elsewhere around the world that you might find. The basin is you see, one of the most important tier one districts for uranium production on the planet. And in my backyard, I'm here in Saskatoon, so it's a fantastic, uh, fantastic place to explore. Our projects uh, in the Athabasca Basin are in the geology that makes these deposits so, let's call it tier one in their, in their, uh, in their outcomes. It, it's a unique geological environment that really just allows these deposits to form at grades far superior to any, anywhere else on the planet. And, and I've looked at most of those over my career. And, uh, and this clearly is the place to be to explore for what is um, a real economic deposit. You know, Rick, uh, Chris, up, Corey came, sorry, uh, Rick, ahead, Corey Peter. came no, to please. us uh, after having 25 years with uh, Cameco and, and looking at projects around the world and, and running Australian operations and, and Mongolian operations for, for uh, Cameco. And as a geologist, he's, he's seen these uh, new ideas develop to find uh, these uranium deposits in the Athabasca. That's what excites me. When we came into this first act back uh, 15 years ago, we had new tools to use, but they've developed over the last five or six years while the market's been quiet. And I think we have opportunities to make new discoveries in the Athabasca. Uh, Corey's got a new team that's developing. I'm excited to be part of that team. And I've been here looking at the opportunities. I think uh, the next gens and the fissions have done a great job over the, over the last while finding these new uh, significant uranium deposits. The tier one deposits are what we're looking for. They displace everything else. And that's what Corey's got his teeth into now. So um, I, I'm excited to hand over some of the reins to Corey. Uh, I don't want to leave. I want to be here. But his young team is right with him. And, and these discoveries are going to come a lot faster than you realize in the Athabasca. I, I think it's important for some of our newer viewers to understand that uh, the company referred to uh, Cameco uh, is the dominant company in the Athabasca Basin. And when we talk about the Athabasca Basin in terms of grade, the average mined grade in uranium worldwide is well less than one half of 1%. Corey, perhaps you could talk to us a little bit about the grade in places like Cigar uh, and MacArthur relative to the global average mined grade. <laughs> well, it's far superior. And you know, it really is 10 to 100 times, depending on what kind of deposit you find in the Athabasca Basin. And that's critical. Many people will say grade is king. Well, here in the Athabasca, you're getting grades for deposits that are 1% even the point, all the way up to 20% to Garley. It's just a unique geological environment that clearly displaces the 0.1% average grades of some other deposit models around the world. So tell us particularly uh, what you're trying to do in the Athabasca Basin and, and describe to uh, our viewers as best you can your competitive advantage in exploration in the basin. Well, we are focused 
one uranium discovery and tier one discovery. That's what we're after. That's what we know. That's what we love. Our projects are well situated. In fact, very well situated in the eastern part of the Athabasca Basin, where all the infrastructure exists for this Pamicos, Aranos. Uh, we're right near the Key Lake milling operation. We're 12 kilometers away at West MacArthur from the MacArthur River mine, the highest grade and richest uranium deposit in the world. And then we've got projects up around the Rabbit Lake operation or McLean Lake operation or near Cigar Lake. And then around that, we also have projects, brand new projects just to the Northeast. These are the same rocks that go out beyond the boundaries of the Athabasca Basin. We have to remember that uh, the basin was much larger at the time of ore formation, 1.6 billion years ago. And these projects have a lot of potential for an arrow or Eagle Point type analog. And we know these deposits go down at least a thousand meters depth. So there's a lot of opportunity to find tier one basement type targets on some of our new claims in the Northeast Walston. So we're in the right place in the Athabasca. We're near the infrastructure. Our partner is Cameco at our uh, West MacArthur project. So that's critical. Um, clearly, clearly we've got a partner that uh, supports what we're trying to do there. We've also got a partnership with Denison down at our Moon Lake project near their Griffin and, and Phoenix deposits. And we're looking forward to them getting on the ground there and doing some drilling for us this summer. So times are really exciting in Eastern Athabasca. Our projects are well situated in the right domain, in the right geological space, right in amongst the critical infrastructure for uranium production in Saskatchewan. Pardon the pun, but I'd like you to drill a little bit deeper uh, in terms of the joint venture arrangement. I, I have always found personally joint venture partners like Cameco and Denison are useful, useful both because they contribute capital and expertise, but useful to me too, because rather than being third party consultants who you have to pay, these people are paying for the privilege to vet your deposit, which means uh, as a as an independent investor like myself doing due diligence, I get to cruise on due diligence done by Cameco and Denison. So perhaps you could talk about these two companies and the nature of the terms that they're earning into your projects on. Okay, well, let's start with, uh, with, with, with West MacArthur. So Cameco has earned their percentage already through the stage one investment. Um, so they are a fully functioning joint venture with us. Uh, they, they have around 26% of, of the project right now. And we routinely talk with them. They help us technically, uh, we, we help them. Um, it's really a conversation and a mutual benefit to advance that, uh, the, the targets that we see at West MacArthur. So that's a great relationship. And let's not forget, we have uh, the, the West MacArthur 42 zone discovery where we drilled 8% uranium. It's just 12 kilometers away from MacArthur River. It's only a couple of kilometers away from their Fox Lake discovery, 70 million pounds of 8%. So the fact we're drilling 8% at West MacArthur grabs their attention because we're drilling the same type of mineralization at Fox Lake. It's in the range of grade that we need to see from MacArthur Cigar Lake and ultimately could be a source of feed with further success for their Key Lake operation which will need feed after MacArthur River has exhausted its reserves. So it's a great relationship. They're involved. Uh, you know, it's, it's really a, a great partnership there. Our Moon Lake project with, uh, with Denison, we've just come through the initial earning on that. So they've earned their 75%. And now we're looking to form that joint venture in the coming weeks to months. And then they're hoping to drill that this summer. So we're excited about that to get Denison in there and continue to advance our Moon Lake project, which you know has shown some really interesting results. So great partnerships, uh, great conversations, and great leverage of you know intellect, you know intellect between the companies toward that what is hopefully a tier one discovery. Uh, my belief is that you add value in exploration through answering unanswered questions uh, around a deposit mm -hmm. thesis. Tell us something about uh, what unanswered questions will be answered in the next 12 months uh, and how you intend to go about adding value for shareholders. Well, unanswered questions, let's start with West MacArthur for starters. Uh, last year, because COVID, we uh, got stopped in sort of the tail end of Q1 with our drilling program. We decided to go in and have another look at the geology, another look at the historical work late last summer. Uh, not drilling, but really relogging. And what we came back with was a much better understanding of what is controlling the 42 zone mineralization, that 8% mineralization that we're seeing uh, at the 42 zone, and like, like Fox Lake. And we opened up a three kilometer corridor where the actual target, the unconformity target that we're always looking for in the Eastern Athabasca model 
hasn't yet been tested, yet we're seeing alteration. We're seeing the structures in the basement, these large structures that control all of these deposits and not a single drill test for that three kilometers at the unconformity. So I always use the analogy and it's out there, tiger by the tail. We believe the 42 zone is that tiger, tiger's tail. And now we have to go out and find the body of that. This is how Fox Lake started. When Cameco first discovered Fox Lake, it started this way, you know, mineralization that, you know, geologically they were trying to put together and it really made sense. The grade looked right. And then a few years down the road, once they sorted it out and found the structures, they got into the body of the tiger and that's Fox Lake. So that's how these things start. We've got that hard part located, that first good drill intercept. And now we're looking forward to, to advancing that uh, in the coming program, which is set to start in August. So we've got a lot of news flow coming from West MacArthur in the coming months, uh, specifically through October, and uh, look for look for some exciting things to happen there, I hope. That's the intent. Um, otherwise, we're trying to ramp up uh, into Manitoba as well in the nickel space, but put nickel aside for a second. We're going in to look at our Northeast Wallston projects. We're gonna do some prospecting there. We're gonna look for mineralized boulders or things that uh, suggest that mineralization is present on these properties. These are brand new properties. We haven't been on them yet. So that's exciting. Again, looking for these basement analogs, these near surface, high grade tier one type basement uh, analogs that are, you know, have been discovered by, by next gen or, or, um, or even the Eagle Point mine where I've got a history. And then Cree East, you know, we're looking to start there again. We've got nine, nine zones of uranium enrichment and in some cases, decent mineralization. Um, you know, this all needs to be followed up. It hasn't been touched in almost a decade with the low uranium price. So, you know, there's an exciting future here for, uh, for Can Alaska in the next six to 12 months as we work to move these projects forward, in particular at West MacArthur, but perhaps even our Moon Lake joint venture with Denison where they're planning on drilling this summer. So it's, uh, it's an exciting time for Can Alaska and its projects. Uh, briefly, it's important, I think, for people to note that to, neither yourself nor Can Alaska are newcomers to the basin. You've been generating ideas there mm -hmm. for 15 years, and I suspect that we can count on you to do new generation, uh, utilizing the intellectual capital that you've mobilized with regard to the basin to add to the uh, uh, property endowment that you already enjoy, uh, and I suspect that to some announcements will be forth forthcoming in terms of new project generation as well. Am I right? Well, <laughs> what can I say, Rick? Yes, we're always looking <laughs> for opportunities. We're a project generator. Uh, we like the hybrid model where we get to operate. Uh, you know, how much can you say? We're always looking for opportunity, whether it's within open ground and we stake it like we did in Northeast Walston. That's a great land package. We waited on that for years and uh, it finally came open and we jumped on it. We believe we've plucked out the best geological scenarios for those basement type targets. We're still looking for other targets in and around the basin that makes sense for Can Alaska and shareholders. We've got a lot on the plate, but there's opportunity out there. And with our history and our knowledge, uh, we believe we can find top quality projects looking again for that tier one asset that our shareholders are after. And, uh, and that's the game. We love it. Gentlemen, thank you uh, for your efforts on behalf of your investors uh, over the last 15 years. Thank you too for your continued support of the Vancouver Natural Resources Investors Investment Symposium. Uh, tell us something about how uh, our visitors can become your visitors. Uh, how can they reach you? How can they contact you? Uh, how can they pick up on the information that you've shared today? Well, please visit our website, www.canalaska.com. That's a great place to start. Um, you can submit anything there and, and we generally try and get back to it as, as soon as possible. We, uh, we pride ourselves on returning phone calls or emails and really staying in touch with our shareholders. So if there's more you want to know, please reach out and, uh, and talk to us. Love to have you on board. Please, ladies and gentlemen, too, drop into the Can Alaska booth at the Sprott Vancouver Natural Resources Investment Symposium. Uh, gentlemen, Peter, Corey, uh, thank you for your sponsorship and good luck. We look forward to having you back in 2022 and you can tell us what you've accomplished over the 12 months that are before us. Thank you again. Thank you, Rick. I, I do appreciate the opportunity to introduce Corey. You can see he's uh, really driven by this thing as I have been as well. These very large properties that we have in the Athabasca are going to turn up lots of new stuff. The new discoveries uh, in the north, 1% uranium on the surface, they're going to have a lot of fun for our shareholders. So look forward to seeing everybody. Thank you. 
We look forward to it. Thank too. you, Rick.